so many nights living out at sea that my heart is gone vacant. Everybody who was close to me all stayed on dry land. So now I'm driving back on in the state west. I just gotta feel something. Well, hello, friends out there in YouTube land. Rob here. I hope you're having a great day. Great day indeed. Today we're gonna do a little chit chat about a commercial I'm getting ready to shoot. Hope you enjoy that song. A little stay right here. Man, I love that song. Great song. All right, let's get into it. This is actually a number two for me. I went ahead and recorded this earlier. There was some kind of setting that was set wrong somehow on my stream deck or actually my YOLO box. I don't know. So I'm going to put up the comments right now. If you guys are hearing anything, it sounds a little funny, let me know because I don't want to have to record this all over again. Today, I want to give you this live stream as a way to chit-chat about what it is that I'm doing and the gear I'm using for a commercial for a congressional race that I've been hired to do. At the same time as we talk about that, I want to also let you know that this is a live stream. If you do happen to have any comments or anything, I'll answer them at the end. I've been using this live stream format a little bit more because it's generally a lot easier for me to produce content just to get it out to you. And most of the time, it seems to do a pretty good job. And this time, recording it for a second time, okay. <laughs> we'll let it do its thing. All right, so the, the concept is pretty simple. I've been contracted, or my, my company has been contracted by a local candidate that is running for an incumbent seat. This is a highly contested area in Virginia, and they have asked me to help them. Uh, in that, they have a plan of what they would like to do specifically of their message, but they really don't have a lot of how they want to get the message out to the people and whomever might actually be there doing whatever it is that they're actually doing. So they've asked me to come up with quite a bit of information in order to make that possible, meaning for the whole commercial and the media that I'm involved with, and I have also been contracted to create the website design, um, then I have to come up with all of that stuff. Now, this, this might sound like a lot, um, and it is, but more importantly, there's a lot of freedom here. There's a lot of challenge that's involved, and it's, it's kind of exciting. One of the couple things you might want to know, like uh, when I was asked about doing this, you know, I talked with the candidate specifically about some different issues because um, we do have some different beliefs on some things, but not so far. We're just, we're not really ideologically apart, but I did want to make sure that the candidate and I had an understanding of the types of material that I would create and some types of things that I wasn't really comfortable creating and therefore would not create. And that's just for me. I, I want to create content for someone that is um, helpful and truthful. And I think that through the conversation, I think that that was just a really great a relationship building conversation to have with the candidate because it turns out that we have quite a bit of things in common, a very, very similar ideological thoughts. There are a few things that we diverge on, but not too far, really. And at least having those types of boundaries set up front is very important when you're in a position to create content. So that's something I didn't actually mention on the, the earlier <laughs> uh, live stream of this. And I've taken that one down in case you saw it. So in any event, uh, we're talking about gear and different things, but that first starts with planning. The, the, the person that I'm working with and the team um, really have put a lot on my shoulders to create the type of content based on the message that they want to put out. And with that, we had a, an idea of a few things that we wanted to do. But number one was we realized that the message in this highly contested area needs to be one that doesn't sound like something you hear all the time. And that's usually just lip service. You, you usually get that. Uh, but the only way that I can kind of ideate that for you is that the content that we want to create is one that educates and gives a reason to do something, which is vote, right? Most of the type of content that we hear in the world today for this type of stuff really is very divisive. It's on one side of the aisle or the other. There's no in-between and it's really mud in the water. Um, my client wants to stay away from that and instead wants to give people reasons to get out and vote rather than just reasons to rile people up. Specifically, uh, an example could be either side of the aisle could blame one side, like take redistricting. And redistricting is something that can happen anywhere, and it's based on the makeup of the uh, General Assembly of the state at the time, and they can draw their districts however they like. It's called gerrymandering or gerrymandering. Or, or Jerry districting. It's got several different names, but you get it. So if a, if a candidate comes out and says, we had an election stolen from us, 
and I'm not. This isn't has nothing to do with Trump or the Democrats or or, or Biden. This is anyone could say that. Oh, they redrew the districts and it was stolen, and we're going to get it back. Well, saying that it's stolen is actually implies a, a crime, stealing, theft, and that could be slanderous. And people use that hyperbolic word so much. Let's let's actually say that hey, you know, if you don't like the fact that your district voted a different way, if you you think you're losing your voice to power, then it's because of redistricting. And you know how you change redistricting? You change the makeup of the General Assembly. That's how you do it. So here, I'm here. So the concept is to educate and empower rather than just infuriate and rile up. Uh, and hopefully that will be an important part of what we're doing. Also, we wanted this to have a uh, your street address feel to it. The concept, again, we're, as a people, we're kind of lied to on both sides of the aisles, right? And the lie is that this side is working for you and the other side is working for you. Uh, it's not Wall Street, it's Main Street. Yes, but nothing ever really trickles down to your street, right? See, that's the concept, right? What happens on your block? Because of that, we want to take this passion and this a lot of momentum that my candidate has, and my candidate is actually the one that has contracted me. She, she has done a lot of work in Virginia Beach and Hampton Roads and has some credible political note to run in the first place, which is why she's doing it. And we're going to take some of that heat that she's got behind her, that excitement, and turn it into that your street empowerment through education concept, right? People can, we want the people in the campaign to think to themselves the answer to the question instead of being spoon fed the answer to the question. We want them to think, oh, yeah, I'd like to vote for you instead of being told to vote for her. All right, so those are the things included. How do we do that with gear? Like, how does that translate to gear? I think this is a good conversation. So the first part is I got three things I'm going to do. Photo, uh, video, and of course, uh, script writing. So the script has already been written, and the script has been written in a modular way so that we can showcase the different areas that we're going to be, the different parts of uh, the district that she's running for, and show this in a land, sea, and air kind of exciting way. Um, so we're going to bring those pieces together with sound bites that we can then repurpose to multipurpose clips that can be easily shared in a 30-second video on Twitch or Instagram or something like that, or Twitter, Facebook, that people can see these salient points. We're also going to work with these multiple pieces of media such that the photo and video is also dual purpose, which means that when we take photo, we're not just doing portraits. We're actually thinking about how that portrait might be used as a negative space background where text might go beside the candidate. So let's start off with the portrait. The portrait piece is easy, the Panasonic S5 with my 24 to 105 F4. Real simple, 24 to 105 is a great length. F4 is something I use quite often, very versatile lens. Allows me to work hard and fast quickly. F4 is great, so we're gonna be outside. I've got no issue with that. We're gonna be using some flash on here as necessary, but um, we wanna make sure that our candidate our talent is completely in focus for the shots that we want, the three quarters and the full length and the headshots. And so I would be using something that's you know, F4, F5.6, F7, or F8, 6.7, F8, stuff like that in the first place. And we're going to be shooting in areas that have a well-defined distance behind the candidate so that we can get that bokeh that we want just by virtue of being further away. So candidates completely in focus. All that stuff. Plus, we're doing it on the S5. I could use the A7 III or the A7 IV or anything like that or the A7 II. I could use any camera, but I really like the Panasonic for this kind of stuff. I really do. And you might also ask, hey, if you were trying to shoot quickly and easily, I see you got another camera there. Why wouldn't you just use the Panasonic for, well, your video piece too? Well, that comes down to another reason, uh, and that reason being that the video piece is going to be held. We want something that looks like your street with the excitement and the power of you uh, being there with the candidate and kind of being involved and feeling like you're there, that's more of a documentary feel, of an immediate feel, of a, a reality TV kind of feel. But don't think like Jerry Springer or Big Brother. That's not what we're going for, not The Bachelor. But that is the type of thing that's covered in a smaller sensor. So we're going to use the X2000 and the 2000 in this configuration right here. It's got a lot going for it. 24-bit audio built in, 48,000 kilohertz or 48,000 hertz sample rate built in, makes it simple. 24 times zoom built in, neutral density filters built in, ability for me to plug in my Sennheiser XSWD system lavalier mics 
straight to the XLR, all on the unit. And that's going to be important because it's going to give me the ability to have that wide shot, walk and talk with her, stabilized on the crane extra on a monopod as I'm moving. I'll be able to do some gimbal shots and some jib, faux jib or faux crane kind of shots all right here, which is very important. Um, but I'll also have the ability to zoom in quite a bit with that 24 times zoom. Some people say, hey, you can't get any separation from the background with a smaller sensor camera. And that's just not true. Of course you can. You got to work for it differently, which is why we're using wireless microphones. We'll talk about these in a second. But the ability to use those wireless microphones uh, allow me to be further away and zoom in closer, thereby creating and, and getting the bokeh that I want. So I'm not really worried about that, getting the bokeh or anything with this camera, because the style of the shooting that we're doing this is really well suited for it. And then the versatility of everything created in that small package just makes it easy for me to use. I'm also going to be doing this as a one-man band, and there are several reasons for that I'll talk about in a little bit. But the other thing about audio is I've got the concept of using audio. I'm going to use my Sennheiser XSWDs. I'm not too excited about them so much anymore. They're kind of irritating me. I've got my Kamika Boom XUs right here. They're charging. The Boom XU is a really great system. The difference is it's UHF, and also the XU is 18 decibels, or which is 35 milliwatt transmit power compared to 10 decibels. Yeah, 10 decibels and um, 10, 10 megawatt milliwatts. Uh, anyways, of the Sennheiser XSWD, the Boom XU have a stronger power transmitter, so that means that I can pick up from further away. The difference is they don't have the smart jumping channel skipping, so you have to pick a channel and go to it. It's just more work. I will use the Sennheisers because they plug straight into my XLR adapters, but they've been irritating me lately. So if I find that I've got a problem, um, I've been getting a lot of jump and a lot of interference, and I don't necessarily know if maybe it's just I've been using them for a few years. Maybe it's time for new ones, but if it is time for new ones, I may not buy the XSWDs again because 300 bucks a pop, $1,000 and three mics basically after tax, and to use them for three years, I don't like that at all. Don't like it. Um, in any event, it is what it is. But that's where we're going here. And we're also going to be using, of course, the crane. The crane's going to give us stabilized shots and allow me to do all kinds of stuff. Uh, it's an interesting thing, Panasonic interfaces with the crane, but not their camcorders, which means I can't use the wheels on the crane or the joystick on the crane to control any of the settings on the camcorder, although I can on the camera. Go figure. Uh, because of that, I'll need to use my remote that I have for this, which is a wired remote and plugs into the back. It's no problem. It's just something to know about. Another piece of video that we're going to be using, of course, the uh, Air S2, uh, Air 2S, uh, the DJI drone. We'll be using this. Now, I've got I've got my drone license, so I can fly wherever I want. Use I've got my commercial pilot's license for the drone. And I also have clearance to fly everywhere we're going to be flying. And some of the places we're going to fly require no clearance. Um, and so I'll be flying in those locations. Now, you might ask me exactly how am I going to do flight without having a, a verbal, I mean, you know, like a visual observer. Well, interestingly enough, <laughs> my talent in this instance will be my visual observer because those are shots where I'm going to want the drone looking straight into her eyeballs. And I might do an orbit or something else like that from afar, from however we're going, but I'll be using those in that, in that particular way. So she'll be able to see for me while I'm off to the side. <laughs> Recording, how interesting is that? Um, the way that it also goes, too. Sometimes I wonder what's going on back there. It feels sounds like a jet engine's taking off. Um, the, the next thing that we're going to be doing, let's see. Yeah, it is. It's running a, a scan for some reason. Don't ask me why. Um, it's irritating because I hear it. The other thing that I've got going on, of course, is my footage that we'll be able to see right here. And yeah, that got me back onto it. Now that gets me to where I want to be, the footage, everything that I'm going to be doing. So I've got a couple of important things as we're doing all this. We're going to be working together as a one-man band, and I've got 90 minutes with my talent without anybody else around. We've already put together the script in this modular form that takes place with like plane, trains, and automobile kind of concept where we have the flight, we have a sea part where we go on a boat, and we do there's some things on a boat. We hit the different areas in in the district that are, are appropriate, right? And we kind of tell the story, but the story is modular, right? Which means that we've got this idea of this commercial that's already put together, but I can't have too much, too many details for her. I can have all the details I want for me, right? Um, and I got them 
written down, right? But I can't I can't give all of that to her because there's a lot going on and it'll feel too much like a script. So I need to keep the 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 micromanagement feel to a complete minimum and just make it feel more like a walk and talk with her. And that's the way that we're going to do this. But I also know that after the fact, there may be additional pieces that we might want to tweak. So I've also got several different variations of different concepts and, and one-liners that we want to say that can be stitched in there and will still have the correct soundbite and still tell the story. Now, we've worked on this for a couple of weeks already, but obviously, whenever you have the ability to be properly prepared, you do it, and we don't want to make sure that we fail, so we get these extra pieces now. Plus, when I do an additional commercial, instead of having to go out and get these different sound bites, unless something completely changes, I'll already have them, and we can go out and get new stuff. And the final part is, you know, when you go out and you work this one-man band kind of thing, it does give you the ability to get closer to your talent and form a better relationship. And if you're trying to show those types of things on camera, uh, the genuineness of someone, I find that working in a small team is best. Sometimes when you bring even a couple of gear handlers or grips to, to bring stuff along, that can actually change things. It can change the dynamic. And you know, those nerves, those facial expressions, the tension can be seen on the film from your talent. And you might say, well, how could your talent, how could the candidate you know, show up and look nervous on the camera, but they are supposed to go out and they're in front of people and give speeches all the time? Well, it's a different thing when you're on stage and the cameras are over there and someone zoomed in. When we're talking about all this, we're talking about having me interface with this and this and the drone and her having to actually do stuff that I ask, which means that there's going to be a lot of coaching and walkthrough. So we've got this, this 90 minutes broken up into basically three separate sections of 20 minutes of work and 10 minutes of relax, coffee, and review, and then move on to the next section. And that will allow us to get our work done without it feeling like work and then allow the genuine personality of the candidate that I want to share with everyone, that good, lighthearted, personable person, right, to be shown, which is really, really what we're trying to do here. So all of those things together, the lavalier mics, right, the, the, the transmission systems, this, you might say, well, what happens if this audio goes down? Like, couldn't you record somewhere else? And the answer is yes. I got a Tascam Porta Capture X8, and I've even got the F1. I could bring the Zoom F1 and get the 24-bit 48 or 96K audio that I want by plugging in any of that stuff to just an adapter, you know, an XLR adapter to 8th inch or, in this instance, just an 8th inch to an 8th inch, you know, line in, depending on which one I was using. But I don't think that it'll go down like that. There, there are helpful parts to having an audio recorder and I may indeed bring the Tascam for that specific reason or the the F1 for that specific reason but in in the overall event of what I'm looking at right here it would be more as a backup piece being able to get everything if if she's going to say anything right to a spoken piece to camera then I'm going to want to be recording and rolling and if I'm recording and rolling, I'm going to be monitoring. If I'm going to be monitoring, I'm going to be need my professional audio that I get right here. So I might as well just record everything, whatever's said or not said in the first place. And then I've got an actual spoken face that says these things. So it gives you the look of your A-roll and your B-roll and allows everything to piece in just like you would like it. So you got a few words that are spoken to the camera that begin at the beginning of the commercial that people can identify that she's speaking to the camera, to them, and then everything else she can be walking or doing and shaking hands and kissing babies on a boat, you know, um, going under the bridge, on the train, or however, wherever the location is. And those words, I still have them, but they don't need to have the video. They can just be played and, and as part of that story. And that's how we're piecing all this together. Should be a lot of fun. Whew, that's a lot. Uh, guys, I hope that you have enjoyed this. Uh, this is, once again, the second time I did this today. And... Um, I think it came out better, but in any event, I want to thank you all so much for watching. Let you know I'll catch you all on the flip side. Say bye for now. Sending you off with a little bit of stay right here. Lost track of the forest through the trees, forgot what I was chasing. Spent so many nights living out at sea, that my heart is gone big.